Hey, Richard Knutson here again. It is the last day of August. That would be August 31st, if you keep track. And I just completed a lovely drive from Chicago to the Dynamic Serum Hotbed of Baraboo, Wisconsin. Checked into my hotel room. Thought I'd check email. And I saw this interesting email right here. Let me read it to you. Hi, Richard. Your video on many-to-many -many relationships really cleared up the basics for me on how to create them and what they are used for in CRM4. But now that I've created one, I have run into an issue which I hope is a small one. Say I created a many-to-many -many relationship you describe with board of directors and contacts. The ability to associate contacts with many boards and boards to have many contacts. But how do I mass import this type of data if I have an Excel sheet with every contact and the various boards they are on? How do I link one contact record to many boards, and how do I do it without creating duplicate contact records for the same person? That's a good question, and uh, it leads to an uh, interesting distinction between the type of many-to-many -many relationship that I described in the article that this trick bag reader read, which is a native many-to-many -many relationship, and the good old-fashioned manual many-to-many -many relationship which I'll show you now. Basically this has to do with the limitation of native many-to-many -many relationships which is unfortunately going to provide a, um, a, a not good answer to this question here which is that you cannot do this because the problem with the native many-to-many -many relationship is there is no intersection entities. There's, in this context here that means there's no, there was no record that you could import from a spreadsheet because there's no intersection between those two. Let me show you what I mean easiest way to see this is to illustrate with an existing many-to-many -many relationship that I've created between contacts and events, and this is a native many-to-many. -many. And you can see I've got uh, the ability to associate a contact with an event, so Adrian Dumitrosky is going to presumably attend that event, and I can add more than one event, so he also wants to attend the workflows event. If I drill through one of these events, I'll show you the flip side of this, which is that events have a effectively a one-to-many relationship with the contacts. This is a prediction, by the way. This is going to be a popular event, I think. So you've just seen that one contact could be associated with many events, and in this case, the flip side, one event can be associated with many contacts. But the problem with this is there's no registration entity. I can't keep track of the intersection of this. What if I wanted to keep track of the status of Adrian's registration? Well, if I double click that record, I'm going to go to his contact record. There is no registration. So in this case, what that means is I don't have a handle to the intersection and I couldn't, for example, port from a spreadsheet that, that intersection entity. So what we have to do, if we want to be able to track information about that, junction or intersection entity is I need to create two one-to-many relationships and use one other custom entity. And you can probably guess what it is. Contacts, events, that's right. Registration. The analogous uh, custom entity to this with boards and board members would be board membership. You have a one-to-many from contact to board membership and a one-to-many from board to board membership. Let's go to registration. I'm going to create two many-to-ones from registration I'm going to have a many to one to contact. So I'll create a new many to one. Good old contact entity. So contact's the primary, and I'm just going to accept all the defaults. And I'll call that attendee, and you'll see why in a minute. And I'm going to create a new, new many to one from registration to event. The defaults there, even though it's not necessarily. Um, going to be the best named relationship definition in the history of relationship definitions. Now what I want to do is I want to put the two lookup fields that Dynamic CRM created when I created those onto the registration form. I'll show you why I'm going to do this in a minute. Add fields, sort by the type. It's a good trick to know about. So here's my attendee in the event. And I've already got status reason on here. I kind of cheated and added something beforehand, so I'll show you that in a second. I'll put attendee there, I'll put event right there, and I'm going to shove name off to the side. Notice this name, which is the primary field that uh, Dynamic Serum created. I changed it so it's not required. 
in relationships like this, a lot of times you don't even need that thing. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and publish this. Now let's take a look at how we work with manual many to minis you might call it that, the old-fashioned approach. So I'll go to my workplace. Now let's go to um, let's go to contact records. We'll go to Adrian's record. And rather than just simply picking an event out of the air and attaching it to this record, what I can do now is go to registrations and create a new registration record. So this is the intersection entity. And what it's going to have is two lookups. The contact one in this case will be pre-filled because I created it from the context of the contact record. But if I go tag an event, I look up an event there, and let's make his status reason confirmed. Notice I don't even need the name. It almost doesn't have any relevance here. This is Adrian's you know, registration for this event. It's kind of self-evident. Create a new one. So notice this is a new registration for Adrian, so I'll go do a lookup here. And this is Dynamic Workflows, just tell me that. And I could obviously change the associated view here to make that better, show that, show some information other than the new field that's not required, but extract from that for now. So now let's go to an event and see the flip side here. And let's go to my Workflows event. And in addition to contacts now, rather than contract contacts, I disappear that and look at registrations. So I've got a registration. I'll make another new one. And I'll, now this time notice that event is pre-populated. I can add a different contact here. Let's go down and get Susie Main on the bandwagon for dynamics here on workflows. So really the only thing I'd need to do here to sort of prove to you that this actually works well. Let's go into registrations, my custom entity, and let's fix that associated view, which is the view that keeps popping up on registrations on the many side of the one to many relationship. Go to forms and views, and let's get that registration associated view. Let's get rid of that name field, which again doesn't serve much of a purpose in this case here, so I'm just going to drop it. And let's add the two lookup fields event and attendee in no particular order. And where did that created on? That doesn't really add much. I could add status even perhaps. Okay, now we're good. So save and close. Push that. And now what you'll see is that this really solves all of our problems, at least in the present context. So I go to uh, Adrian's record. I look at his registrations rather than events. I use this intersection entity. I see, sure enough, it's Adrian. He's attending these different events. I might want to look these out a little bit. And if I go to, click on the link there, so now I'm, instead of drilling through the directly the record, I click on the ring, link and I go to the what's new in Dynamics CRM 2011. Click on contacts, which is not what I want to see, right? So these are just the contacts. That's the many-to-many, -many, uh, the native. But with this approach, I make new registrations, and now in this case, I'll select a new attendee, save and close. So now you can see I've got not only both relationships, two one-to-many relationships, which makes a many-to-many, -many, but now I've actually got this junction or intersection entity that I can use to track information like status, reason, whether they paid other things like that, and I could import this information from a spreadsheet. So there you go. I hope that uh, that answered your question. You said it was a long-winded question. Well, there's a long-winded answer for you. So hope you found that helpful.